Hi, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for being here with me and sharing in a little bit of your Friday with me. Um, I just put makeup on and curled my hair for the first time in, I don't know, two weeks. And it feels good, let me tell you, to spruce yourself up a little bit. If we haven't had a chance to ever meet before, my name is Carrie Skelton. I am a lifestylist and blogger. I run a website called kerryskelton.com. It is uh, it's something I created back in 2017 after I got out of traditional media for 13 years and we had our son Wyatt, who's now whew, gonna be five this summer. So the website is, well, it has a very hyper-local focus. Every Friday I produce what's called the local love list. So that's hidden gems, cool local product, unique events happening in the Edmonton area. Well, not right now, but typically uh, unique events that's, that are happening in and around where we live. So that's every Friday. I also share, um, there's lots of parenting conversations that happen on there, style inspiration, DIYs, recipes, and I'm gonna be really amping that up over the next couple of weeks. So um, I'd love if you checked out my site and feel free to steal any ideas that work for you and your family. So I hope you're all doing well. Um, I truly mean that. I'm gonna be sort of, you're gonna notice shifty eyes. I'm doing this on my, my desktop in my master bedroom, <laughs> which is also my office. And I have my phone right beside me here with a couple notes on it, a couple key points that I want to make sure I don't miss. So that's where the shifty eyes comes in every once in a while. But I do hope you're doing well. I know this is such a strange time for all of us. And I feel like finding ways like this to connect, it's essential. So to my friends at the Creative Hive, thank you so much for creating the space where we're able to do that. So every single Friday, every weekday Friday at 11.30 a.m. on the Creative Hive Facebook page, they're doing these live sessions with different experts every day. It's been quite the lineup this week and next week we have Justine Martinson from Lipstick Empire. She's gonna be uh, giving a talk. We have Christina Dennis from the DIY Mommy. She's awesome. I'm assuming she's gonna be sharing like cool stuff that you can do around your house with your kids potentially. Um, Jesse and Amber Capina are going to be on here and a whole list of others. And I'm hoping that Jesse and Amber are going to be talking about, um, and I'm assuming they're doing so, something to do with relationships and how to nurture your relationship at this time as we're all living together all the time. There's uh, definitely some challenges there for everybody. Um, and when you have some time, take a scroll back through the Facebook page and have a listen to some of these other talks that have happened this week. We've had... Um, Former CTV news anchor Daryl McIntyre was on talking about finding your truth. Uh, Jamie Sele gave a talk about dream building, which, you know, right now, a great time to dive into all of that. And Jamie Bay of The Wellness Warrior did a talk, and she oh, does amazing talks on um, dealing with anxiety in business. So she's really good with that. She did a talk earlier. I think it was last week. So that's on the page as well. Um, today, I'm going to talk about healthy family time management. So I'm not a child psychologist, not a family therapist, not a teacher, none of those things, um, but I am a work from home mom. I run my business from my house. I'm the primary caregiver to our four and a half year old son. Um, so I feel like I've gotten good over time at managing our family schedule. My husband typically has a very busy event schedule. Um, he hosts his own radio show, um, the Ryan Jesperson show on 630 Ched. He's also the in-game host for the Edmonton Oilers and hosts a number of events throughout the city throughout the year. So our schedule's crazy. It's all over the map, typically. Um, so I've really had to get good at managing all of that and making sure that everybody's cups are filled. So I'm hoping to share a couple of tips with you today. And I know that um, I know that we're all in different situations and, you know, reacting to this differently and having to deal with this differently. Some people have lost their jobs. Most people have moved their businesses to their house. Um, some people have, many of you have kids that are in high school, you know, grade school, you know, I have a little guy that's in preschool. So we're all coming from different situations, but I'm hoping there might be just one or two takeaways for you from this chat. Feel free to ask any questions as we, uh, as we go along and Des is going to pass those off to me at the end and I'll be happy to answer. Also, if there's something that you uh, forget to ask and you want to later, I'm always available on Instagram. Just send me a DM. You can send me an email as well. Um, and these tips I put into a blog post on my website this morning. So if you go to kerryskelton.com, if you want to follow along as we're talking about this, you can do that. 
or instead of frantically writing notes while I'm talking, just know that all of the stuff that I'm talking about, it's all written out for you on my blog, so you can check that after. So let's dive into this, shall we? Grab a quick sip of coffee. Very needed this morning. Okay, so healthy family time management. I feel like the order in which I'm gonna give these tips would be different if we weren't going through what we're going through now in our world. So the first one that I'm gonna start with might have been the last one if we were on the regular right now, but we're not. Uh, the first one, to me, the most important is let it go. I believe wholeheartedly in creating routine and having a schedule. And we're gonna get into all of those details, but it's a lot right now. It's a lot to run your household. You're becoming teachers. We're homeschooling our kids from, from home. We're meal planning. We're connecting with friends. How many group chat, video chat dates have you had lately? <laughs> Which is wonderful, um, but it's a lot. There's lots going on, not to mention the consumption of the situation, the consumption of news and information. So it's a lot on us right now. So feel free at some time to let it go. Let me give you an example. Last night I was on a video chat with my girlfriends. It was uh, one of my good girlfriend's birthday. So we were all connecting and chatting about life and the challenges that we're experiencing and the joys that we're finding. And one of my girlfriends who is has three children, one is in grade two for our little guys in kindergarten. And she also has a five month old baby. Her husband is not working from home now. He's still required to go into work in a small office um, that they have. So she is suddenly at home with five month old baby, being a five month old baby, and her two kids who are still having to do all their homework and whatnot. And she shared with us last night that she has had several meltdowns, which I think we all have lately in being able to get it all done, being able to get the assignments in and making sure they're learning and making sure they're, you know, somewhat protected from the information and making sure they're getting outside and all these things on top of everything else that you're taking care of in your household. And so she had that little bit of, you know, a cry, which is totally normal and understandable. But, you know, we got to talking about how it's okay to just let it go. It's okay to just throw out the schedule sometimes and just be with your kids. And it doesn't mean like, don't do any of the homework and, you know, don't follow through on any of the stuff that you're supposed to do for school. But some days we like to call them gold coin days around our house where you're able to just say, okay, assess the situation. We are not in a good frame of mind to be able to do what we were supposed to do today. So we're going to throw in the towel today and we're just going to relax as a family. In this case, maybe we'll go for a walk together. You know, maybe we'll just chill. Maybe we will watch a movie. Maybe we'll play a game. Point is, there's going to be no schedule. There's going to be no routine. There's going to be no to-do list. We're chucking that out because we need to just chill for a second. And I also feel like right now is this beautiful time to embrace that as well. You know, the other day I was sitting with our little guy, reading a story. He re likes to read the stories to me now. And I just found like, I, I feel like I've been able to just operate at a slower pace and relax. And that's allowed me to like, recognize these beautiful moments that are happening right before our eyes that typically in the busyness of activities and play dates and school and work and all these things that sometimes we miss. So sitting there watching him read this book, I'm watching his little mouth move as he's saying the words and his beautiful eyelashes and just soaking that all in and embracing that, embracing this time. So on a day where you need to throw out the schedule, don't be afraid to do so. I mean, the Alberta government has said the kids that were on track to pass the grade will be passing the grade. And again, not an excuse not to do the work, but it's okay to take a step back and take a break. Allow yourself that time. Okay, number two, one of my favorites, say no. So we know it's a lot right now. Um, an overwhelming amount of news and information and to-do lists and we're sort of thrust into these new roles in our household. So say no to the things that aren't going to serve you, that you're maybe feeling a bit of stress about. Example, I'm very passionate. There's a big push right now to support local shops. I'm a big believer in that. But I know a lot of your incomes, a lot of people have lost their jobs, 
their household incomes have been sliced in half. If you don't have the financial means to do that, I mean, you have to say no, but let go of the guilt of doing that. You have to start with what's best for your family. What's going to serve you the most? You're not going to be a crappy friend if you don't do the family dance challenge or the push-up challenge or one of the 10,000 challenges that are happening on Instagram story right now. And listen, if you find joy in doing those, then that's great. But if you're being tagged in them and you're like, oh my goodness, okay, got to get the push-up challenge done. And I got to do the, um, what was the one we were tagged in the other day? The acro yoga couples challenge. I'm like, I asked Ryan if he wants to do it. And that was a hard no. So don't feel like you have to keep up with all of this stuff and don't feel the pressure to do it all. Put the needs of your family first and just say no to a lot of that stuff because there's so much right now. It's good. It's good to connect, but it can be too much. And we have to set boundaries on the consumption of information. And quickly on that note, um, I know a lot of us are feeling like it's all consuming and it's kind of hard to not watch the news and watch the updates every day. One of the things that's really helped me is um, putting a boundary, a time limit on when I can check the news, when I can get that information. So I go online and see what's going on with the pandemic when Wyatt goes for his nap. Yes, he still naps at four and a half years old hoping we hold on to that for a while. Um, so I check the news during his nap and then I check the news in the evening and that's it. It's so easy for me or would be to just pick up my phone and have my face in my phone the whole time I'm with him, just staying glued to the story. But I feel like that it just, that doesn't serve anybody well. So I set a couple boundaries up with that. Okay. <sighs> Number three. Hello to everybody, by the way. I feel like I'm just rambling and not saying hi to any of you. Hi, Lindsay. Hello, everybody at the Creative Hive, and feel free to ask um, any questions that you may have, and I will take them at the end or later on today. Number three is communicate. So as far as families go, it's important to keep those lines of communication open, especially at this time. So I like to suggest having a family check-in once a day to see how everybody is doing. There may be challenges going on with the structure in what, which you've set things up, that is causing stress on a family member and you might not know about it. So it's a great time to just openly chat about where you're at, what you need, what you want, how things are going. So once a day, whether it's in the morning before you start or in the evening around the supper table, just to check in with everybody. I think at this time in our world, especially as a on the regular basis too, but um, it's a good time to do so. Number four, setting goals. So long-term goals are effective. I truly believe that. But in this situation, I feel like short-term goals are going to be the most beneficial. So have a couple of goals personally and a couple of goals for your family as well that you're going to tackle and write them down. Make sure to write them down. I'm learning a lot about goal setting over the last couple months. And the biggest message that is really sinking with me is to write the goals down so that you can see them and go back to them and have that visual. And it's a great way to be efficient and effective during this time as well. There's so much that we can be doing and it can, again, be overwhelming. But just having a couple goals, like let's say three a week or one a day that you're going to tackle, um, making it realistic and writing those down. And goals for yourself and goals for your family too. Uh, keep a visual of the plan. So I think it's really important for the whole family to be on the same page for what's going on each day. So... Decide what the plan is. Let's say like for us, my husband and I check in with each other during the evening. We say, okay, what do you have going on tomorrow? Right now, my husband's doing his radio show from our garage. <laughs> so that's different. He's typically out all the time. Now he's home all the time. So um, it's good to always just be checking in with each other and making sure that um, you know, you're on the same page with what the plan is. So having a visual for that, like a big whiteboard or a big chalkboard is um, a great idea. Now, I honestly can't believe this is happening and I can't believe that I forgot about this, but I'm getting the error message on my computer that I have a low battery and my charger's downstairs. So pause, I will be right back. Sorry about that. 
I knew I would forget something. I had the dogs taken care of. I had Wyatt set up with a show that he was going to watch. <sighs> but I forgot my charger. So here we go. Okay, we're back. So where were we? Keep a visual of the plan, whether that's a big whiteboard, a big chalkboard, and make sure the plan is on there for everybody to see. Whew, I'm out of breath. All right, number six. We have three more to go. Schedule time to schedule. So this is a practice that I swear by in normal life, and it applies to now too. So set a couple of hours a week to just schedule what's going to happen moving forward. So for instance, these last two weeks in our family, I've been very sort of, we've been very relaxed with schedule, which with like activities and worksheets that Wyatt's gonna be getting from school. I mean, he's in preschool, so it's nothing too intense, but we've just been sort of easing into the new transition and not making a lot of, not having a lot of structure quite yet. We're on that sort of spring break vibe. But now, this next Monday, we're going to be like, you know, it's like we're going back to school. So this weekend, I've scheduled time in our calendar to schedule the next week. So that's making sure that I'm prepped. So doing the planning ahead of time so that everything during the week can run as smoothly as it can possibly run. Of course, there's going to be hiccups. This is life with kids. This is parenting. Um, but having that plan ahead of time will really help you. So I'm going to make sure I have all the work stuff ready that he's going to do each day. I'm going to have all of the materials for the crafts that we're going to make. Um, I'm going to be doing some meal prep. So I'm going to be spending a big chunk of time this weekend doing that, but it is going to save me a bunch of time and a bunch of anxiety and stress next week because I'm prepped ahead. So schedule time in your schedule. <laughs> schedule time to schedule. That is so type A, isn't it? It's so me. Okay, number seven. I love this one, focus. So I always work from home and I get for a lot of you, this is new, having to work from home, having to bring your business here. It's easy to become distracted. Do you ever feel like you're so exhausted and you've been so busy all day, but like you look around your house, you're like, nothing really got done. And for me, it's been because I wasn't focusing. I didn't have focus on a task at a time. So one thing that's really helped me is setting timers. So I'll give you an example. It's like, why is it taking me so long to clean the kitchen? Like, what is the deal here? Well, if I really took back and assessed the situation, I'd do a couple dishes, I'd go check Instagram, go answer an email, maybe I'd pop down, throw in a load of laundry, zip upstairs, make the bed, kitchen's still not clean. So now what I like to do I set a timer for let's say 45 minutes or however long it's going to take you to clean your kitchen. And for that time, you are not allowed to check your phone or answer an email or go to any of your devices until that buzzer goes off. You're not allowed to leave the room unless you got to go pee. That's the only way or get a snack for your kid. Um, for that time, you are in the kitchen cleaning. Or let's say it's doing work. For this time, you set the timer. I'm going to in my case, write a blog post. I'm not going to check emails. I'm not going to answer Instagram messages. I'm writing blog posts. So focusing. I really find that focusing on one thing at a time, and I know a lot of you are multi, um, master multitaskers. Um, for me, I used to think that's the way I was, but I also sort of realized that I accomplish so much more when I'm focusing on one thing at a time. And setting those timers really, really helps. Um, I also have to do that when I play with Wyatt. And I know that might sound totally ridiculous to some of you that I have to set a timer when I'm playing with my kid, but being a stay-at-home mom and a work-from-home mom, um, it's easy to get distracted. So we'll be on the floor playing Hot Wheels, but I'm like thinking about, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And it's easy to just pop into those rooms and get stuff done. So I set a timer um, for let's say 30 minutes. And for that 30 minutes, I'm not doing anything else but playing with my kid. He is getting my undivided attention. So that really has really helped me setting timers so you're able to focus. Uh, number eight, the final one is non-negotiables. So you wanna create an environment that is gonna set you up for success in this situation. So, you know, maybe for me, I mean, for me, honestly, for the last week or so, I've been working really hard to get our house in order. 
so we have a really nice environment to coexist 24 7 in um, if there's chaos around the house i find that it just adds so much anxiety and stress and there's arguments and we don't want any of that but what are the non-negotiables so for instance for me i refuel i recharge by getting alone time that is a bit of a challenge right now <laughs> so my husband knows this about me we sat down and talked about it and how am i going to get still get my alone time that's going to make me the best version of me ultimately the best for my family so we decided that i was going to do the dog walks on most days that i was going to take the puppies out for their walks because then i get that little break and i get a chance to be in fresh air I'm not necessarily totally alone, I'm still with the dogs, but I'm away from humans for a, for a little bit. Um, so that's one of my non-negotiables still. And I feel like sticking to them as best as we can in this circumstance is so important. Another one for me is exercise. So haven't been doing that lately, but gonna be starting again on Monday. And I know for me, I'm in a, I'm a, in a better frame of mind when I'm exercising. So I'm gonna be finding ways to make that happen. So really, I don't know, ask yourself, dive deep. What are your non-negotiables? What is gonna make you the best version of yourself to be able to be the best in this situation? It's tough, we're all in the same four walls. We can go into our yards, that's about it. Maybe maybe head to the River Valley, hopefully. Um, we still get to do that, but it's, it's unique circumstances. So I feel like it's very important to identify what you need, communicate that to your family, have the visuals of the plan, and just try to stay as healthy as possible. So that is it, one through eight. And as I mentioned, it's all available on my website at curieskelton.com. Uh, the Creative Hive is going to be posting this on their Facebook page as well. I'm just checking to see if we have any questions. If you guys have any questions or if you think of any, any questions later that you forgot to ask, you'd like to ask, um, please just reach out to me and ask away i think that's it though um yeah okay that is it thank you for sharing a little bit of your friday with me and i hope that you were able to get some great takeaway from this and enjoy the weekend and embrace the time with your family and don't forget to wash your hands